Okay, welcome back to this tutorial series. Um, in, in this video, we're just going to carry on with our code, basically. Um, so I'm not going to waste too much time and just get on with it. So in the last video, we basically tested our absolute basic project setup, and it seemed to work quite well. So let's just carry on, and we'll get on with registering our events and sort of coding our, you know, the, the rest of our code. Um, so what we need to do is register our events, like I said. And the way we do that is by um, using the plugin manager, which is something Bucket provides. So the way we get the plugin manager is from the Java plugin class. Um, and because we're extending it, we can just do this. Uh, we need to get the server first. So we do this, get server, which is that one there. And then from that, we can do get uh, plugin manager, which is there. Um, and because we're only registering one event, there's no need to actually store this in a variable. We can just use it straight away. So we can treat this whole thing here as the plugin manager variable that we previously created. Um, so we can just do, um, like, we can just do register events. Um, and again, this takes uh, four parameters. So the first one is the type. Um, sorry, the, is the type of the event. So this is going to be event type, and then the event we want to register is player. So all the player ones are listed when you just type PL. And if we just scroll down, we want to use player interact. Uh, and this is called whenever a player interacts, basically. So this is uh, sort of you know clicking, essentially. Um, and this is what we're going to be using to drop our blocks. So when they click on a block, we can destroy it and drop the drop. Um, the listener is going to be something we're going to create in a moment. So I'll just leave that as L. And the priority is going to be set to um, priority, like so. Uh, no, not like so. It should be T. There we go. And we're going to set this to the um, Let's just go with normal for now. Um, it might make sense to set this to high priority actually because you may want to detect if um, a block break has been cancelled or something. I'm not really sure to be honest. <laughs> um, no, oh no, maybe it should be lowest so that other plugins can cancel it. But you can work that out for yourselves. Um, I'm going to be going with normal. To be honest, normal is usually sufficient. Um, and the final parameter is just the plugin, um, and that is the instance of the main plugin class, which is just this, because we're registering, registering our events inside that class or object. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is just fill in our listener here. Um, so we're going to create a new class, so I'm going to go and do that now, just by right-clicking on our project. I'm going to go to, sorry, our package, go to new, and then class. I'm going to call this class super pick player listener like so I'm just going to click finish and we get our new class created so this class needs to extend the player listener class which we do by which we do by just typing extends player listener so whatever sort of the type of your listener is like player listener block listener entity listener you extend the respective class for that and that just provides the various sort of events and things you need basically Okay, so that will just need importing, which is why it's gone like that. So we just need to import it from Bucket, like so. So then, now we've created our listener, we can go back to our Super Pick plugin, and we can create the listener as an, uh, a property of our class. So I'm going to create a new private property. Its type is going to be Super Pick Player Listener, which is just the name of the class we just created. It's ne it's uh, sorry it's name yeah it's name it's going to be player listener and it's going to be equal to a new super pick player listener and we're not going to be passing in any uh, parameters okay so then we can just replace our l down here with this property so we just do this player listener like so. Um, I suppose it might make sense to have this as a variable actually because this line is quite long so I will just do that thinking about it. Um, it makes it easier to maintain your code as well because say you want to add more events um, you can easily do that. 
So what I'm going to do is just delete that there and bring it down here. And then we're going to create a new variable in, instead of this line here. So this variable's type is going to be a plugin, plugin, plugin manager. Its name is going to be um, manager, and it's going to be equal to that thing that we used pre uh, used previously. So this we'll just need importing. So just import, and then we can use this here. So we can just use manager like so. So that means that, so for example, if you wanted to add a block break event, all you'd have to do is just copy this line and then change the events and the listener. So that is actually quite a, you know, a much better way to do it. Okay, so now we've registered our event, we need to actually um, you know, use it. Because at the moment, all that's happening is it's all trying to be called and there's no function for it to call in this method. Sorry, there's, there's no method for it to be to, for it to call in this class, is what I'm trying to say. So what we need to do is create a new method to handle the player interact event. So we're going to create a new public method. Its type is going to be void and its name is going to be on player interact like so. And this is we're going to take one parameter which is going to be a player interact event. I'm just going to give this the name of event. Okay? Uh, and this will just need importing because um, well, it just needs to be. There we go. So what we can do in here is check to see if the player has left clicked on a block, because these events are called um, for quite a few you know situations. So left click and right click are two examples, um, and we want to make sure they have left clicked because that is you know generally how you break a block. Um, so mm, I should probably point out that even if the player has remapped their keys, because um, you can do that in the new version of the game. So if they have it as if they have like if they've swapped them round, so breaking a block is right click, um, the left click action is still true. They still tried to break a block. That's all that means. It's not. It's a little bit awkward, really. But anyway, so what we need to do is check to see if they've um, left clicked, and we do that by getting the action, which is either going to be left click, right click, or you know one of the available. Um, so we do. We can do that just by doing if event get action which is the top one and then we can check this to see if it's equal to action um, left click block and then you can see all the various options that are available um, left click air, left click block, right click acceleration key, I'm not really sure what most of these do but anyway um, so we just want to register, you. well we want to check to see if they have left clicked on a block and if they have we're going to go ahead and destroy that block and you know drop it. So what we need to do is well actually we should pro well we'll do this afterwards but I'll just demonstrate how it works first. Um, so left click on block we've determined that. So next thing we need to do is actually get the block that they have clicked. So we're going to define a new variable whose type is going to be block, and the name of the variable is also going to be block, and this is going to be equal to events get block, which is Oh, sorry, get clicked block. Like so. Okay, and that will need importing and import. So now what we can do is do um, block. Mm, actually, thinking about it, what we will need to do is get the type of the block separately because when we set the block's type, that type will be overwritten. So we can't set the type to air and then drop the type of the block because that will drop air, which doesn't make any sense. Um, so what we need to do is get the blocks type, which we can do by um, creating a new variable here, uh, which is going to be a material, and this is going to be the name, it's going to have the name of type, and it's going to be equal to block get type, like so. And that's the type of the block that we're going to drop. Now obviously this is slightly different to how the game behaves normally, um, because say if you break glass it doesn't drop anything but using this method it will actually drop a glass block um, but I'm not going to be um, going over how to have it drop you know, a natural drop because that's not the point of this video the point of this video is commands which we will get to eventually honest um, so yeah that's why we're just dropping it like this it's just for simplicity of the code and to be honest it is kind of a nice feature because sometimes you do want to collect glass blocks and super pickaxe mode would be quite a nice way to do that anyway what we need to do next is set the block to air, 
so sort of simulate breaking it. So we just do block set type, and the type is material air, like so. And that will just remove the block, but we want to actually create the drop as well. Um, so what we do then is well, we create the drop by from the world, um, and the way we can get the world is from the block. So we can do block. Um, I did cover this in the TNT plugin actually, so maybe it's quite um, it's better explained there. Anyway, once we've got the world, we can use the um, was it create drop or drop item naturally uh, property. Sorry, uh, method, which takes two parameters. One being the location, and the other one being the sort of, you know the item that needs to be dropped. So the location we can get from the block just by doing block get location, and the item stack we need to create. So we just do new item stack like so, which uh, takes two parameters. The first one being the material which we stored in the type variable like so, and the second one being the you know, the number which we can just set to one, so one drop. Because you've broken one block, one makes the most sense. So what we can do is just import this to get rid of that red underlined error, and then we should be ready to test this out. Um, at the moment this will just always be enabled for all players, which is obviously not something you want, um, and that's what we're going to cover in the next part once we've tested this um, with commands. Um, I won't be including permissions because I have covered that already. So. What we should do now is go ahead and export our plugin. Um, so let's just do that by double clicking the description and clicking finish. So then we can start up the server. If it ever loads. There we go. So then we can go across to the game and just refresh this. Oops, I've got the sound on, hope you didn't hear that. Um, so we'll just connect to my testing server and I will go ahead and click some blocks and you can see that they destroy instantly even though it's actually in creative mode in this world. Um, so maybe... Um, okay, my key bindings are all messed up. E. Okay, so I'm in creative mode so our plugin might not actually be working um, although it does appear to be dropping a grass block, which isn't a natural drop for, um, you know, this grass dirt. It should be dropping a dirt block, so it does apparently it is apparently working. And um, we can test it even more by you trying leaves. So if we just break some leaves, you can see we actually get a leaf block. So that is working. Um, but I will just teleport to our um, actual world by doing that, and then that to make it day. So now we're in our, you know, our public world, um, which I've kind of ruined, but it doesn't matter. So now if we just click a block, you can see that it is dropped instantly, and my game has apparently just crashed. Okay, so I will try and... What's happened? Okay, okay, sorry about that. My game apparently crashed, which is kind of odd, but never mind. Um, but you did see it was actually working, so we can just let that crash and we will can uh, well let's just stop the server because it was working you did see that um, the sand blocks were broke instantly and they dropped so we can go ahead and move on to the next step um, which is adding commands to enable and disable this um, but like I said we will cover that in the next part okay so thank you for watching and come back for part three where we'll cover actual commands